All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of Retro Rewire. My name is JJ in the hunt. We're at it again. Sugito Saitama Japan Part 2. Let's get it underway. And we're going to start in this section here. And as you can see, we have a variety of games for a number of platforms. And everything from 360, PS2, PSP. And we're going to start at the top. And the interesting thing about this is most of these games are rated Z, which is pretty much M for Mature or uh, in North America or Peggy 18 if you're in Europe. And they put them on the top shelf to just kind of keep it out of the reach of younger children. Just below that, we have our PlayStation 2 titles. And yes, we're going to have a look at a few select titles. But before we dig deep into the PS2 section, we're going to start with the Xbox 360. And as you can see, it is slim pickings, but they had a few interesting titles like this Dirt 3 for 2,000 yen. Freaking love this game. It's also available for the PS3, which is what I have it on. And if you love like arcade racing games, rally racing games, I definitely recommend that bad boy. And then we have Lost Planet 2, which is a freaking awesome multiplayer game back in the day. And that one still holds up, um, especially if you're not if you don't mind the solo player experience. But we have part one, which is also available for the PS3. And this one I was recently playing. And, you know, um, gameplay wise, it still holds up, but visually it is rough, a little bit rough around the edges. And then we have Tekken 6. Now this one's coming in at 500 yen. Um, I have this one for the PS3. It got the platinum trophy. And of course, I, rec I can recommend this one. It's a freaking awesome fighting game. PlayStation 2 titles, we have Arcana Heart. Now this is a 2D fighter featuring an all-female roster, I believe. Haven't played it myself, but at 500 yen, that's a bit of a steal. And, you know, if you love your fighting games, this one may be worth checking out. Now next to that we have Air. Not really sure what this is about, but I did like the cover there and it looks like it's some kind of visual novel. Probably heavy on the Japanese, so definitely proceed with caution. And next to that we have, not really sure how to pronounce this, Otostaz. And it looks like it might be like a city building type of game um, using like stencils. So that's kind of an interesting little uh, visual feature. But then we have Klonoa 2 for a thousand yen. Now the interesting thing about this one is that it's getting a collection for the PS5, PS4 and the Switch. And you know I'm definitely going to pick that up. And then we have Knights, uh, or Knights, uh, King... Um, King 3, I forget the name of this one, but it's a racing game that started life on the Sega Saturn and I believe part 1 got a release in North America under high velocity racing. And then we have Vitamin Z, welcome our new supplement boys, that's freaking hilarious. Not really sure what this is about, but it looks like it's another visual novel. And next to that, or kind of next to that, we have uh, Let's Something, which is Mad Maestro in the US, uh, in North America. And I remember seeing this one on the shelves of uh, GameStop back in the day. And who knows, it could be fun. And then, if, and then we have our PSP titles, and we saw the Vitamin uh, XZ there. It looks like it got a sequel to that Vitamin Z Boys type of deal. But interesting uh, selection of PSP games, and there was a few actually that I wanted. Um, and definitely feel free to pause you know i think the psp made up the bulk of this uh of this section and of course you know what we're gonna have a closer look at a few select titles like this one here something in high school not really sure what the name is but it kind of gives me like some bully vibes it just uh kind of like the japanese version and it's kind of funny because he's kind of fishing there and that one could be good i don't really know but next to that, we have Chains of Olympus, God of War, 500 yen. The interesting thing about this one is that it's published by Capcom in Japan and not actually by Sony, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then we have a JRPG of sorts here. Um, definitely a cool cover. I haven't played this one myself and I actually don't know too much about it. But judging from the back there, the screenshots, I definitely like the visual flair of the game. And maybe there's like an English patch floating around out there in the, on the World Wide Web. <laughs> and then we have Dogma Wars. Now this is actually White Knight Chronicles, which I freaking loved on the PlayStation 3. Played both uh, Part 1 and 2. And I would have loved to have played this one, but... Unfortunately, it did not get a North American release, but who knows? It could also have an English patch out there. And then we have Sega Rally Revo for a thousand yen. I, and I could definitely recommend this game. Freaking love it. I have the PlayStation 3 version and this PSP version. It's also available for the Xbox 360, but freaking awesome racing game. And then we have Echo Chrome. Now, this is the game that I like to go to when I'm, when I'm tired of my violent video games. You know, and I just kind of want to relax, but it's a freaking awesome, like, platforming puzzle game, and it's highly recommended. And it's also available on the PlayStation 3, uh, off of the PlayStation Network there. And then we have Katamari here for 500 yen. 
I have actually never played any of these games on any platform and I definitely would like to play this series and I think if I ever do, I'm definitely going to start with the PlayStation Portable version. And then we have Half Minute Hero. It's been ages since I've played this game. Um, I think Actually, I've only played the, the demo, but I remember the demo and it was actually quite uh, quite a bit of fun. I think this game might be actually expensive in, uh, in North America, but anyhow, PlayStation titles. Look at that, not too, not too many titles, and then even less uh, Sega Saturn, only three measly titles, and then we have uh, GameCube titles there. We're going to start with the, with the PS1, we have Final Fantasy IX for 500 yen, and then eight for 500 yen. The interesting thing about those is they, they include the spine cards in that they're not in the junk section. And then we have Ark the Lad, uh, part two for 500 yen, not really sure what this is, but the pricing kind of matching everything else and it looks like it could be like a trivia game based off of like a, a variety show in Japan I'm not really sure and then next to that we have Tales of Eternia for 500 yen which has a freaking awesome cover definitely like that artwork and then we have this Sunsoft game they, they release a lot of those, those types of games and then we have the Nocturne for 500 yen and I actually don't know too much about this one other than what you can see here which seems to be like some kind of mystery novel I definitely would like to try this one out but it's probably really heavy on the Japanese so it might be a little bit difficult to follow and then we have uh, Rockman X4 for a thousand yen this is the limited uh, the special limited pack and then we have uh, Rockman 6 the complete works I have the complete works of part one which is a uh, freaking love that game and the cool thing about those is that they include a lot of like little extras and then we have Rockman X6 now I haven't heard a lot of great things about this one um, and I have this and it's a part of uh, well my version is a part of the Mega Man X collection for the PlayStation 2 so I'll definitely try it one day as this one uh, Rockman X5 uh, I've played very little about uh, I've played very little on this one but the story seems to get a little bonkers and then we have the greatest 997 freaking baseball game and then we have this this looks like it's a football manager type of game and it's a collaboration between Sega and Enix so who knows it could be the start of something great <laughs> and then we have a uh, greatest 996 for 300 yen I can't believe there was only three titles which was a little bit of a bummer to see um, but that's just the way things go nowadays and then we have a few GameCube titles. We're going to look at uh, Biohazard Zero here for 500 yen. Now, the interesting thing about the, the Japanese release is that they included a memory card. And usually um, you can tell if it's included by just kind of tilting the game over like you see here. And unfortunately, this one does not include the memory card. And then down below, we have a few limited edition games. Um, and we have this one by Konami for 4,000 yen. I have no idea what this could be. We'll have a closer look at the figure there. But um, in fact, let's do that now. I'm not really, I'm not really sure what this is about. But every time I see a figure, it's kind of tempting to pick it up. But who knows? This one could be good. Anyhow, we have the retro section, the proper retro section here. And as you can see, a variety of things in stock. And there was a few nice surprises here, as you will see very, very shortly. And we'll start at the top. Once again, we have Mickey Mania, which is probably my favorite Mickey Mouse game. We have Goemon 3. We have Act Razor, Doraemon. Not really sure what's uh, this game next to Doraemon, but then we have uh, a, a Rockman 7 for 500 yen. And that's the cheapest that I've seen that game. I actually ended up picking it up. Um, and no regrets there. And then off to the side, uh, just hanging off the peg hooks here, we have a few complete in box. Super Famicom games, we have Puyo Puyo 2, we have some Kirby game, and there was nothing here that really caught my attention, but definitely want to document it. And then I, I freaking love these Famicom games, just the variety of colors and shapes. Um, but I don't collect for the Famicom, but I do like to gawk at it. And then we have the N64, and as you can expect, a lot of the major first party releases at pretty good prices. And then we have Sparkster Rocket Knight Adventures 2 for 12,000 yen, which is about less than 120 bucks. Definitely cool to see that one as I have not seen it out in the wild before. Then we have a... Uh, we had a uh, Bare Knuckle 2 there. We have a, a few Famicom Disk System games. Um, not really familiar with a lot of these ones as you can see but um, this one has a pretty interesting cover for a thousand yen and then we have a few handheld games which look at look how clean the Super Mario Land freaking uh, box is now this is like late 80s vintage man and that thing looks freaking awesome and then we have Castlevania 3 there for 4,000 with a few other uh, Famicom um, 
Famicom games again with the all the different variety of colors and then we have a few uh, some more boxed uh, Super Famicom games that Aladdin for 1,500 yen was definitely tempting I freaking love that game and then we have um, Art of Fighting 2 for 1,500 and then more game or more GameCube more Game Boy Color titles I freaking love those Wario lands and I mean, just look at the condition of these games. They're just kind of like thrown into this basket and that's freaking awesome condition there, man. And that's 1,000 yen for Wario Land 2. Um, I have this one, but I have it in, actually I have part three in just like the loose cart. And then here we have N64 games. Just a, I'm not sure what that fishing game is, but it's 3,000 yen, a little bit pricey. And then the original Super Mario 64. Now the real, the now this was a definitely a surprise, like seeing this uh, Super Game Boy 2. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and cut to Surugaya in Tokyo. You can see 3,900 3, for the loose cart, and then 7,100 for it boxed. Definitely a lot cheaper out here in the in the sticks. And I had to pick this up as soon as I saw it. Um, I put that in my basket. Anyhow, let's go ahead and make our way down the junk section. Freaking love this section. As, as you can see, we have some le English language signs. So it's definitely, um, it's very appealing to a lot of people. And as you can see, the junk section is actually healthy looking. There's a variety of games, uh, a few consoles and uh, cables and all sorts of accessories. Definitely can spend a, a bit of time just kind of scrounging around through it all, which I love to do. And here we have N64 titles. Um, a lot of them are coming in at uh, 300 yen, which is less than three US dollars. A lot of the major titles there. And then Super Famicom, look at that. Super Mario Kart 8, it's seen better days, but I bet you that game still runs. And then we have, of course, Wii titles, PlayStation 2 titles. And I'm just gonna dig in uh, through this, uh, this bin here. And then look what we have here, Lost Planet. And it's coming in at 100 yen. And then here we just have loose PSP UMD discs. I definitely like to like uh, just kind of like dive into this because you never know what you will find. You know, we have a Peace Walker here and that's coming in at 110 yen, which is less than a dollar. And then, you know, as you, as you look through here, sometimes you find some interesting stuff like this Wonder Swan title, which is J-Pop Mix Volume uh, 9 there. Not really sure what that is about, but interesting to see but anyhow let's take a closer look at some of these junk games and of course as we're all fans of biohazard we're going to take a look at biohazard 2 it's coming in at 110 yen which is less than it's less than 90 cents it's like 84 cents or something something like that but let's take a look at the disc and as you can see very light scratches there not nothing that is going to prevent the game from running and then we're going to take a look at disc 2 the clear disc and this one is actually in even better condition. Look at that. I, it's just a little bit of uh, smudges there, but nothing major. And not only do you get like uh, good condition games, you get like the memory card stickers, but not just one sheet, you get two sheets. Look at this. And then of course we have the manual. So that's not a bad price for like 80 some cents. And then we have uh, Parappa the Rapper there for uh, again, 80 some odd cents. And I actually ended up picking that one up. And then look at all this hardware just kind of thrown around. I definitely like seeing that so I can kind of like uh, get my hands dirty and just kind of dig in deep to the in with all this great junk. And then we have a Famicom here, which is coming in at 300 yen. A little bit um, discolored, but you know, whatever. The PlayStation 1s are 300 yen. And a lot of this stuff can be used for parts as well as, but a lot of it is actually going to be working. In fact, I remember a few months ago, I ended up picking up a Wii for 500 yen like this one here and it worked and the cool thing about like uh, the hard off uh, stores is that they do have a testing station you know they have all the cables all like the AC adapters so you can definitely test it they even have TVs and then we have an Xbox 360 box there for 3,000 yen and then we have a loose one here for 1,000 yen but definitely like seeing all this junk section and this is the stuff that I bought here I got Rockman 7, Parappa the Rapper and of course the Super Game Boy 2 so definitely happy with the uh, with the items that I purchased here. But anyhow, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. More is uh, more, more content will be coming soon, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Anyhow, see you soon, ciao.